All right. So if you talk to people today, there's just one thing on everyone's mind. Yeah, not that. I mean, I'm talking <laughs> investment wise, financial wise, and that is inflation. And so in this video, I want to tell you three things that you should do right now to fight inflation. The first one is really, really obvious. I mean, and my guess is that a lot of people are already doing this. I, I read yesterday in the Wall Street Journal that the banks have lost something like $85 billion worth of deposits just you know, the last few months or so. so. So that'd be the first thing, which would be to get your money out of banks. I mean, that's pretty obvious because if you go and look at the interest rate on your savings account, I mean, it's nothing. I mean, it's negligible. I went and looked it up before make, going to look this video. The highest rate that I could find was 0.8%, 0.8%. That means that even before this current bout of inflation, I mean, you were getting negative 1.2, 1.5 because the Federal Reserve, our central bank, it is their policy to have inflation of 2% every single year. So if you are looking at what inflation is doing today at four or five or 6%, I mean, you're losing five or 6% by leaving your money in the bank. So that would be, Step number one, get your money out of the bank. Step number two, what do you do with that money? Well, to me, the best place you could put your money into as a long-term inflation, I don't want to use the word hedge because this word is overused uh, and people will come to troll me when I tell you what this is, which is that I would buy Bitcoin. That's right, buy Bitcoin. And here's why, all right? Yep, I know that Bitcoin is crazy volatile and people will say, well, Paul, how can you possibly say that, that Bitcoin is an inflation hedge? And the thing is, is that Bitcoin has gone from zero to $40,000 in the last 13 years or so. So despite whatever volatility, if you had bought and held on, you've made a ton of money. And here's why I believe that Bitcoin is an inflation hedge. Ultimately, inflation is driven by people's fear um, that money that we are saving, storing up is going to buy less and less in the future. And so what you tend to want to do if you're concerned, worried about inflation is try and buy something that's very scarce, very finite. Some people talk about gold, but gold's a problem. I mean, you know, you know, what are you gonna buy, a gold bar? I mean, it's difficult. And gold in the stock market is not quite the same thing. So gold also, you know, it, it represents like a, like a previous solution, like an old world solution, when there's a better one, which is Bitcoin. Some people talk about land, but hey, you gotta have a lot of money to buy land. Other people talk about scarce things like diamonds, collectibles, arts, et cetera. But for the most part, these things are inaccessible to the vast majority of people. But Bitcoin, it's finite. I mean, it is like definitively, mathematically finite. 21 million coins can ever be mined. 19 have been mined already. And it is something that you can buy in any quantity. You don't need to have a million dollars to buy Bitcoin. You can go on to Cash App or PayPal, your Robinhood account. A Coinbase account and just go and buy $1. You can buy $10, you can have $100. So you've got something that is very finite, something that you can buy in any quantity. So you're starting out with $100, you can start there. And the other thing is that is something that you can see very clearly see if you're reading the news that as the world goes through inflation, because inflation is not just happening in the United States, it's happening in India, it's happening in Indonesia, it's happening in Europe. People are looking at their own currencies and saying, hmm, how much more can the issue of this, how much higher can inflation go? And if I'm saving in this currency, what will it buy me three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? And Bitcoin is now a known global currency. Everyone understands uh, that it exists. They may not understand it exactly. In my opinion, it's not important. The critical things about Bitcoin are the fact that you know that it's finite. You know it's not issued by any bank or government. And its policy is set. There's only 2 million more coins that can ever be made. And people all over the world already know it and are buying it. 
And I believe they're going to come and buy it in bigger and bigger quantity as they experience the inflation that everyone is talking about. So that would be the second thing to do uh, to fight inflation today. The third thing to do is a little bit controversial, and I'm probably going to get some, some push uh, on this, which is said to buy into the stocks of companies that deflate the inflation. I'll repeat that, all right? Buy into the stocks of companies that deflate the inflation. And what's an example of this? Well, the best example of this is Tesla. I mean, Tesla makes electric vehicles, and then less known is that they make a lot of energy-based products. For example, they have solar roofs, solar panels, they have a power wall, they also have a power pack, and it is going to be a very large part of their company over time. Now, if you own Tesla, you've got something that has risen a great deal over the last one, two, three years, because what they make deflates, if you will, the cost of gasoline. I mean, the cost of gasoline is somewhere, depending on where you live, three, four, maybe even five dollars. And that means that a lot of people exposed to high gasoline costs are now starting to consider and look and then buy EVs. Tesla, for example, is sold out for all of 2022. I mean, if you want a Tesla, you're going to have to buy a used car from somebody else, but you have to wait one year. And that's what I mean. Tesla deflates the inflation that you are seeing at the pump where you're going up and what when it used to cost you 20 or $30, it now costs you $50 to, to fill up your tank. And there's other companies like this. I mean, many of them are across all of our portfolios, exposed to all kinds of things, housing, uh, through 3D printing, um, renewable energy, battery storage. And generally, if you think about robotics or even artificial intelligence, the very nature of innovation, which is what we are all in on across the services uh, that, that I manage, We've got a number of newsletters here exclusively focused on disruption and innovation. You can check into the details if you're interested uh, to know what they are. The nature of all of them is that they deflate things, prices of things that have risen a great deal. So that would be my three-step plan for fighting inflation. Number one, get your money out of the banks because you know what? Those returns that you're getting, I mean, they were already negative before what we're experiencing. And it's now way, way, way more negative. The next thing is buying Bitcoin because it is finite. It is easily accessible and there's no minimum limit. You can buy $1, $100. And the third thing that you can do is buy into stocks of companies that deflate the inflation that we are currently experiencing. And I brought up the case of Tesla. If you're looking for an ETF that would give you sort of broad exposure to a lot of these kinds of companies, you can buy the ARK Innovation ETF, which has a lot of the companies that we also own across our services. And as I mentioned, you can also check into our services. My flagship newsletter is called Profits Unlimited. It's a multi-cap newsletter, and we're all in on innovation that deflates inflation. So hope you liked it. If you did, Subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and come back next week. Until then, this is Paul saying bye.